What's up guys, welcome back to another video here in the shop. Uh, today I am going to start uh, the suspension disassembly on the 2F Polo. So I kind of have a game plan put together. The comments on the last video as far as the, the question as to whether or not to go uh, custom coilovers or build an air suspension set up for the car was pretty even in the comment section. I know I understand and relate to every one of your guys' um, kind of points of view on the car. And everything's relevant, I think. There's pros and cons to doing both, but I think I'm gonna bag it. I know, and I, I say that 50-50. I really would like to do another coilover setup in one of these cars, um, and I'd really like to just do another static car. Uh, many of you guys that know me personally know that, you know, the last, I don't know, Basically every car since 2016 when I had my derby, I've done on air. I haven't done a static car in quite a while, but this specific style suspension, I've done two of and they've always been static. So I'm actually kind of interested uh, and excited to do an air suspension setup with this type of suspension setup. So that being said, talk to the good friends over at Bag Riders. We're gonna work together on this project. Uh, the episode after this, the episode after this might be the first episode of the podcast of the century. I think that'll be the one after this episode. But the next vlog episode about the shop and about the polo uh, will most likely be me heading up to Burlington, Vermont to go to Bag Riders to pick up the suspension. There's, there's a few different things I need to pick up for the polo and a few things I'm not too sure about what's going to work and what isn't going to work. So I'm going to go up to Bag Riders, show you guys their new facility, give you a tour of uh, the new building that they're in, in Burlington. It's, it's amazing. It's like a full-blown shop and office space. Give you guys a tour of that, but also pick up um, a bunch of suspension components for the polo and bring it back here and then start building from there. So with that being said, I think I'm going to go air. Excited to work with the Bag Riders boys again. Going to be using Airlift Performance products as always. And uh, I kind of have a game plan together. The day before I go up to Burlington, I'm probably gonna head over a few towns over to another friend's place who is a Volkswagen wizard in my area. He's got a holy grail honeypot of Volkswagens and I need to pick up Mark I Rabbit front knuckles, the small 90 mil axle hubs and knuckles uh, to build the new suspension off of. So I'm gonna do that. But this episode, just gonna be tearing the stock suspension out. All right, so the one thing I try to do before I start a project that has a lot of suspension modifications to it, especially if I'm going real low, like the Corvair, the 700, when I'm trying to put a car on the floor, the Sentry itself too, the Sentry lays, lays control arms and engine cradle out on the ground. I like getting a measurement of what the ground to top of the fender arch is from the factory height, just to kind of get an overall idea how low um, it went. I mean, obviously you can get an idea for just measuring from the ground to the lowest point of the undercarriage of the car before you lower it. And then if that part touches the ground and you're done, you kind of know how far you've gone. But it's, it's kind of cool. It feels old school to me to measure to about 12 o'clock in the wheel arch and see how far it's come down. 24 and a half. 24. Just over two foot, about 24 inches, 24 and a half on the other side. And uh, yeah, 24 and a half up front, 24 in the rear. So that's kind of easy enough to remember. So the trunk was actually broken, uh, the hatch. Uh, it was locked and neither key would uh, work the tumbler inside uh, to open the latch. So I didn't film it, but I got into the back and uh, got the panel off, was able to get it open. And the key does work. I think, the, I think it just needs a bunch of lubrication in there. Um, the key does work, so I was able to get it unlocked and be able to open and close it, because I'm, I'm gonna need to get back here. That's sorted out now. Everything's super solid back here. There's no rust, there's no moisture. It's got a full, it's got a full spare jack and all that still in there.
So about a year ago, Fluid Film reached out to me on Instagram, of all places, and first of all, wanted to know if I'd ever heard of Fluid Film. American made, uh, kind of like WD-40, um, like an all-around like lubricant and water displacer and rust protection and all that sort of stuff. Um, but my dad has always had Fluid Film in his shop, and this isn't a paid advertisement for them, but I do really appreciate them sending me a box of Fluid Film. So, I'm basically calling it a night for the night, and I'm going to go around the car and spray down everything i got to take apart tomorrow morning. That way everything can soak overnight. Everything looks pretty good. Nothing looks too corroded or rusted to where it may fight me to the bitter end, but I don't want to jinx it. I've had plenty of Mark 1s and 2s, and nothing ever comes out easy on these things. Nothing. All right, guys, it's the next morning. Technically, it's the afternoon. Uh, worked on the latest episode of the Podcast of the Century this morning. Um, the first episode of the Podcast of the Century. Uh, when you guys are seeing this, hopefully you're seeing this on a Sunday when this first gets published. Tomorrow, finally, will be the first episode of the Podcast of the Century with my good friend and mentor, Robert Overholzer. And uh, he owns a Porsche restoration and motorsport shop in Richmond, Virginia called Wolf Technic. So stay tuned for that. This has been a long time coming. Him and I recorded that episode in Ocean City at the unofficial H2O last year, uh, 2020, during the chaotic year. So stay tuned for that. So I'm working on the front end. I've got the rear end all loose, all ready to go. I'm gonna wait till the car is down on the ground. I don't have any screw jacks. Uh, screw jack stands here. They're all at my dad's shop and I don't have any here yet. So uh, to lift the beam, to relieve pressure, when I take the upper mounts off, I'm just gonna lower the car down and put my floor jack under the beam. So I'm working on the front now, I've got the brakes apart, I've got my ball joint um, bolts freed up and out. I haven't separated the ball joint taper yet, um, but I'm working on passenger side front, got the brakes off. Okay, so I'm in the shop alone, so to hold the axle while I try to break these bolts free that look like they've been in the car since 1991. Luckily, I can reach my lift arm with my pry bar with two lug bolts in the hub. So basically, I've got it clocked to where when I try to loosen the bolts on the flange on the, on the transaxle side, it'll lock this in hopefully and I can break those bolts free. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to do that every time around for like maybe two or three bolts, whatever I can get access to. So you do when you work in the shop alone, I suppose. This is where I envy all my friends who uh, automotive YouTube stuff and they've got like a crew of people at their shop at all times. Having an extra pair of hands, <laughs> that helps. But this is what you get for living in the woods of New Hampshire. So I've been fighting a war with this front end for the last hour at least, and I didn't film any of it because I just had to get the job done. And uh, yeah, it was a war. Trying to get this lower ball joint separated from the spindle, from the knuckle, uh, it was being super stubborn, and there's not a lot of room in here. Also, uh, it took me a little bit to remember what I did in the derby, but since the sway bar acts as a strut rod, as a, as a um, tension rod basically it's basically a control arm of sorts so that I needed the control arm to drop low in order to get the ball joint to slip out but if the sway bar is mounted to the frame horns the control arm can't drop to get the ball joint out so I basically undid the mounts for the sway bar dropped the sway bar so both the sway bar and the control arm could drop when I separated the ball joint since I still have the springs in in this, uh, the strut assembly, so I couldn't compress that um, without a jack, which I did a little bit, but then obviously, once the spring catches tension, it's lifting the car off the lift. Basically where we're at now, both lower ball joints, or ball joints in general, are freed up and separated. Tie rod ends are freed up and separated. Brakes are off. Calipers and caliper housings are off. Dust shields are off. I had to cut a couple bolts on the 
passenger side. I got the dust shields off so I could get to the ball joint area. Passenger side axle is out. I gotta get my driver's side axle out next. Get the upper strut mounts loosened up in the engine bay and drop the front out. And the rear's already loosened up. Just gotta get that lowered down and get, get the rear struts out. We're getting close. All right, well, the suspension's out. Uh, front, the full front suspension. Uh, the strut assemblies, knuckles, hubs, uh, front axles. And I got the rear uh, strut assemblies and coilovers out as well. I think for how low I wanna go in this car, I might have to notch the floor for the beam. And my plan is, I haven't gotten too far into telling you guys the full plan, but I plan on making uh, three to three and a half inch drop plates for the rear, which I made for my Fox wagon back about 11 or 12 years ago. So I'll be able to relax the suspension and drive at a better either coil rate or PSI while I'm driving super low. So I'll get an immediate drop. It's like running a drop spindle basically. Um, but I'm gonna design them in CAD and then use my father's uh, CNC plasma machine to plasma cut them out of steel. But what I'll do is if you notice the pivot point for the beams up here, so the lower you go, the farther in in your wheel arch your wheel goes. So what I'll probably do when I make the three inch drop plate is I'll offset it. You know, I'll, I'll stuff the beam up and figure out, you know, if an inch really needs to be taken care of to come back. So basically what I'll try to do is offset the drop plate so when I'm at ride height or aired out, uh, the wheel will be centered in the wheel well. So that's coming soon. I want to figure out what needs to move. Um, I'll probably have to relocate a lot of the fuel line stuff because the lower the, the, the lower the car goes, the higher the beam goes, it's going to pinch all the fuel line stuff. So I got to figure all that out. But first and foremost is going to be figuring out suspension. I'm going to hopefully be picking knuckles up at my friend Pete's place on Monday in two days. And then Wednesday heading up to Burlington, Vermont, the bag riders to get suspension. But I wanted to get this pulled out now so I can take my factory strut assemblies and my, and my rear struts up to compare to the Mark I, like the Airlift Performance Mark I bag kit, as well as some of the Airlift Performance universal like builder kits. Because I might use, I might utilize the front builder kit so I can run a dual bellow bag in the front and not a sleeve bag. Because sleeve bags are just awful. They're just awful. I think. For the size of the bag, actually I'll show you guys right now. I've got the front bags I'm gonna use here. So these dual bellow bags come on the universal builder kits from Aero Performance. And size is pretty comparable. I mean, they're pretty much the same. So I haven't actually stuffed this up in here yet, but I'm pretty sure there'll be more than enough room. Oh yeah. There's more than enough room on both sides, all around that bag. When this bag compresses, when it airs out, the overall diameter doesn't get any larger. So, yeah, these bags will work for up front, which means I'll be able to build a um, universal strut body with these bags, basically. So, I'll keep that in mind. And for the rear, I will have to use a sleeve bag because of how narrow the strut tower is in the back. So I think I've got a game plan together. I'll know for sure coming midweek, this upcoming week, once I get my knuckles, I'll know whether or not I can use the Polo hubs, which means I won't have to 
make axles like I did on my derby. So shout out to my friend Joe Stackman uh, in England. Joe, thank you so much for the insight. Uh, Joe's had a bunch of polos and Mark IIs and Mark Ones, and when I did the derby, in the last episode I talked about how the inner and outer, or the outer Mark I and polo uh, CV joints and axle spline counts were different, so that's why I had to make axles. Joe actually let me know that on his, he pressed the hub out of the polo knuckle and the OD dimension, the OD diameter of the hub flange pressed into the ID of the Mark I wheel bearing. So I've got my fingers crossed, that'll be the case. So tomorrow or Monday before I go to Pete's, I'm gonna press these hubs out and take this hub with me and um, see if they'll press inside of a 90 millimeter small axle Mark I rabbit or golf knuckle. If that works out, Joe, I owe you a root beer next time I come to England. I'll buy you a pint. I don't drink myself, but I'll buy you a pint. For sure, because that'll save me so much work. Uh, I was not looking forward to making axles again for, for this car. Yeah, keep your fingers crossed for me. I'm really hoping once I get that hub flange out that those hubs will press into a Mark 1 Rabbit. That'll be, that'll be just be a godsend. That's really gonna do it for this episode, guys. Everything's out. Everything's out. I mean, I've got the, the strut rod sway bar combo setup still unbolted so I can swing my control arm down as much as I can. Uh, tie rods are looking good. Ball joints seem to be good. They don't have a lot of play, so I don't think I'll have to mess with those. I'll redo all my brakes um, when I go to Mark 1. It's a good starting point. Getting the old suspension out is always kind of a hassle because everything's rusted and seized up and whatnot, but I didn't have to fire the torches up, which is good. Well, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Step one, basically down. I'd say step two, getting it in the first place was step one, but stock suspension's out. Really excited to start on the fun part of this project next, which is building uh, the new suspension. And yes, going air, uh, all you static warriors, trust me, there's, there's another one coming. I'll do something static again soon. Uh, I agree with everyone's opinion, static versus air. But the 2F Polo Coupe is going air. Here's the next poll for the YouTube comments, guys. My two options, or my two desired options for the Polo for wheels is uh, high offset, zero lip, big wheel tuck, that full German look, you know, like face mounted, zero lip, 17s, 16s or 17s tucked up under there. Or do I go 13s or 14s, big lip, a little bit of poke, nothing crazy, but laid out, small wheels, lots of stretch, lots of lip with a little bit of poke. Just like the air versus static pole, I like both of those looks. My Derby was on 13s, like real wide 13s. My Fox was on narrow 13s, which tucked, I mean, I tucked 13s on the Fox. I mean, and that thing was static. Yeah, so small wheel, big lip, low offsets, or do I go big wheel, zero lip, you know, motorsport looking face mounted wheel tucked up under there with lots of tuck. I mean, I don't want to chop the car up a ton either. There's, there's not much room up in the front inner fender well, and I really don't want to start down the rabbit hole. I really only have four or five weeks left, about five weeks left on this project. So I don't want to get, with limited tooling here in my shop, I don't want to get too, too stuck in the rabbit hole of, of fabrication and whatnot. So let me know in the comments what you think for wheels. Which route would look best? Which route should I go? Which route would you go? That's it for this episode. Stay tuned for the first episode of the Podcast of the Century coming next. And after that, we are going on some field trips for some Mark I suspension parts. Thanks for watching, guys.